Woot woot, hey, 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 hey. Welcome to Fair Trade Friday. And if you're listening after the fact, it's so great to have you join. And I'm going to talk about the product of the week. And I'm going to talk about some kind of off fair trade things. My hair. I think my hair needs to be, uh, it's getting a little, needs to be trimmed, I think. It's getting, it's getting heavy. I call it Chia Pet Syndrome when it sort of puffs out. Anyway, all right. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, first of all, I want to show you if you are local. I'm going to pull this up right here. If you're local to the Long Beach area, Southern California, what you doing tomorrow? Come by the Parkview Village shops. We're having Christmas in July. We're actually having a raffle. There'll be a DJ. It's going to be kind of warm tomorrow, but in Long Beach, it'll be a little bit cooler than in the inland area. And there's a lot of shade. I have a tent. As a matter of fact, you can come and hang out in my tent if you want. If you're not local, I'll be doing some lives to show you what's going on. But if you're local, stop on by. Come on by and say hi. Come check out the doggy bandanas. There's a lot of people that come to that event with their dogs. So I'm looking forward to them sampling the doggy bandanas and taking some photos and such. So would love to have you come by and check out the new products and take have a visit and say hey. Grab a tea. There's a great uh, eco coffee and tea shop. You can grab a tea, come and I've got a couple of benches in the tent area and you can come and sit and kick back and have a good time. Would be great for you all to stop by. So this is the, it's from noon to 4 p.m. It's in the Parkview Village shops close to Fairtrade Long Beach, Carson and Bellflower in Long Beach. And if you don't know where Parkview Village shops, you can Google that or you can Google Fair Trade Long Beach. It's right kind of one street over from the actual Fair Trade Long Beach store. You can pop into the store, check out the Baskets and Beads Kenya space. Oh, I don't think I'm even having microphone. I think my microphone was off now that I looked at that. Okay, that's great. Gotta love that. And anyway, maybe <laughs> you didn't hear anything I said, so I'll say it again because I just looked and my mic was flashing because it was off. Had the dog barking earlier. Actually, I did an interview earlier today, and I had to keep hitting the the button because George, my cat, was up here and he's meowing into the microphone. And then Gracie was back in the room, and she doesn't like being put in the room, so she was doing this and whimpering and screaming. And I kept hitting the mute button, and my mute was still on, so it might not have recorded, or you might not have heard that. So I'm going to repeat what I said in case that wasn't. Uh, a thing. I actually have this on my Instagram page. So if you want the details and the information, you can actually come and see that you can come and see uh, on Instagram and it's on the basket. It's just posted to the baskets and beads Facebook page and get all the details. It's, it's a great event. It's fun. Even if you don't want to buy anything, it's just a fun place to be and hang out, listen to some music, walk around the vendors, say, Hey, and all that good stuff. Hopefully you can make it out for our second Saturday event. We will be having a raffle. It's Christmas in July is our theme. We do this every second Saturday in Long Beach. It's a open air type market. And we were actually, we're doing it as soon as they started letting us gather again. We've been doing this, I think since, I want to say September, October timeframe. I don't know. In December, it's, that's where I unfortunately fell and broke my wrist. I tripped over something there and, and, did this kind of thing and went down on my wrist and eh, boom. Anyway, so if you're local, great, come on out. If not, just visit basketsandbeatskenya.com. You can see the new products. As a matter of fact, let's talk about the product of the week. I am wearing the product of the week. The product of the week are these classy tunics. And I'm wearing the blue one, of course, blue being my favorite color. I actually should put this down some so you can see more of it. I'll stand up. So this is, this is a nice, uh, it kind of gives, the material gives a little bit. It's a little stretchy. It's a one size fits most. Now I have it tied on my waist. I'll stand up and show you that in a minute. But it's got the, it's got, it comes in blue, green, or black. I'm wearing the blue one today. And of course I have a paper bead necklace on. But the, uh, this here is 
um, oh, hey, Colin, what's shaking? And, and, and this is the uh, Ankara wax print fabric. And it, then it's embellished all the way down. You can see it. It's embellished all the way down and on the bottom. You, if you don't want to use the belt, you don't have to use the belt. You can just let it flee, flee, flow. <laughs> Free flow is the word. So uh, you can see that it uh, actually the, the model is lay, on the website is Layla, our director. Um, she's wearing the black one. So if you want to wear it like this, you can tie it or you can let it kind of flow freely and it looks very stylish and stunning. I have it with a pair of black pants, but you see you can wear it with any of these colors and it picks up the colors nicely. And of course I've added a paper bead necklace that is all bright color and, and shiny, not shiny, but just bright colors because it goes well with my signature blue color that I always wear when I'm speaking on negotiation. So that that's the product of the week. You can go to basketsandbeadskenya.com and check that out and check out the other things. One of the other new products over here, this one, I showed this before, but this is the, this is a new one. We've only got a few of these to test and see how they're going to go. This is the Selena two in one. And there's a, there's a yellow one, a red one, an off white and a white. And it's a two in one because this can slide off and you can just wear the choker or you can wear it like this. And this is a nice long necklace. I was wearing the white one today with another outfit for when I was doing the interview and it's very lightweight and this is fun. I, I love necklaces like this because it's fun to play with anyway. So those are, those are at basketsbeatskenya.com. That's the product of the week. Come out tomorrow. If you are local, I would love to see you. It would be so wonderful to have you stop by. It's so exciting to be able to gather again with people and see people. We don't have to wear masks and you can walk around freely and you can hug people and all that. That's just great. I just love that. I just, uh, it's awesome. So I, I thought I'd share, and usually I'm sharing about fair trade, but I wanted to share something, kind of a safety thing. I get a lot of fake profiles. And I know a lot of people who do get fake profiles. I used to get them all the time. I would get, gosh, five to 10 a day until I changed my settings to only friends of friends could see my profile. Now, sometimes I make my posts public since I'm a public person with things to speaking about negotiation and then baskets and beads. So my po posts sometimes are public, but my profile can only be seen by friends of friends. So that reduced significantly the amount of fake profiles that contacted me. But I see too many of my friends, and it seems to be the same ones, accepting just anybody. And these fake profiles then come and go through, pilfer through their profile and start hitting up other people. And so I would get hit up like that. Or another thing that they're doing now is they can't friend you. So they will leave like my, like a post I put up recently was a public post. So they put a comment on the public post and we're like, Oh, you're so beautiful. Your smile's beautiful. I, I want to know you, but we're not friends. Would you please send me a friend request? Blah, 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 blah. And they had a grammatical error in there. And from what I've read, that's done on purpose because if somebody will excuse a grammatical error, they may excuse other things and it may allow the scammer to, to get in more. So I want to show you, it's on my personal profile. So I wanted to show you this, that I, so I, I this is the, the picture and there were some other pictures of this guy that, um, the profile and the, the name on the profile was Scott Anderson Brendan. Now that sounds kind of weird. Said they lived in, he lived in the UK and there was a few pictures and there weren't a lot of, a lot of posts. It was a fairly new profile. Those are some things to watch out for. So it, I, I just put this up and a couple, like three people have shared this and a lot of people have commented on it because uh, there's things that people didn't know about is in fact, 
So what I did was I saved this picture and I looked at it through tin eye, T-I-N-E-Y-E, tin eye. And there's tin eye and there's Google reverse image. You see it's here in number three. And I went through tin eye. So I saved it from his profile. I uploaded it to tin eye and it came up as uh, like on several scammer websites. This guy is a news anchor in Louisiana and his profile pictures have been stolen and used by scammers uh, so many times. It's ridiculous. So there's a, there's a nonprofit called Catch the Catfish. And I have that here where they go and they take these pictures and they show, oh, okay, this person is really not whatever name they're using, their profiles been pictures have been stolen. They do it a lot with military veterans uh, and, and you'll see doctors. And there's one guy who I've, I've gotten contacted with his picture with five different names. It's ridiculous. Anyway, the, I should have saved the comments and posted it, but I was so frustrated. I usually, what I do is I, I go to their profile and report it, but half the time Facebook even and or Instagram doesn't do anything about it. I'll get something back saying, oh, this doesn't violate our standards. Okay, you're obviously don't have somebody, you must have an AI or something that just runs through and doesn't really look at the actual profile itself and does the things that I do. So I suggested a few things here that you need to consider and look at. Now, maybe you're listening. You're like, oh, I already know about these fakes. But there are so many people, if you go to YouTube, you can find video after video after video of men and women who have been scammed out of hundreds of thousands of dollars through these scammers. They, they prey on people who are single, who they think are lonely and Oh, okay. You need to hear, of course, we all want to hear that we're loved and we're beautiful and we're special and whatever. I mean, my love language is words of affirmation, but I don't need the words of affirmation from somebody who's fake, who's just there to actually take from me. So I, I have done several blog posts in the past about things about how to recognize a scammer. As a matter of fact, one person, uh, one of my Facebook friends, I did this with, uh, I did, I did post a, a blog post and she read it and she said, Oh my gosh, I was talking to a guy. And then I did what you said and found out that it wasn't a real person and I almost got scammed. So I was able to help at least somebody not get scammed. I know a, a, somebody else a long, long time ago before it was kind of prevalent and known that there were a lot of scammers out there. And she actually, was about to, the guy was supposed to come and see her. That's what they do. Oh, I'm going to come see you. Oh, I can't. Oh, I'm stuck. Send me money. And she was about to send him money and something told her to call the embassy in the country that he said he was in. And they said, this is a scam. And she didn't believe it. And it's a scam. And they, they sent her some articles, I think. And she realized that she was uh, about to be scammed. She said she'd even talked to his so-called roommate or somebody, but that was another scammer that was just talking to her and making her believe that. So these are some things that I put up. I mean, I had a whole, I have a whole list of things that you don't need to, you need to consider and you don't need to uh, do, I guess, when you get reached out to by these people. But here's a few things. One, the name. So look at the name. A lot of times, like this, this name was kind of strange. What, what was the name again? Scott Anderson Brendan. That, that's a weird name. And it's, it's three names. Okay. I go by Eldona Lewis Fernandez. Lewis was the name I was born with. Fernandez was the name of my children's father. And that's what was my name in the Air Force, Master Sergeant Fernandez. And I put Lewis in front of it as a speaker name because people were thinking I was Hispanic and I'm not. So I wanted to stick the Lewis in there. That's the whole reason I put Lewis in front of my name, Lewis Fernandez. But a lot of times it'll be like three first names or something weird like Richard Johnny or something like that. You need to pay attention to that, first of all. And well, the first thing you need to do is look at the profile. Don't just accept friend requests from anybody. You need to look at the profile closely and make sure it actually has some things on it. It's not just been started a few days ago or whatever. And you see that maybe 
you have some mutual friends, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because a couple of the ones I looked at, my mutual friends, they keep accepting these scammers, these fake profiles. So I don't trust when I see their, I've actually reached out to a couple of people and said, Hey, do you know, this is a scammer and you're just accepting the friend request. Oh, how do you know that? Look at this, 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 and this. Oh, you're right. You got to pay attention to this stuff. And I know probably 99% of the people listening do this, but maybe there's somebody who wasn't aware. I actually had somebody when I told them to look at the photo through 10 eye or Google reverse image, they said, Oh, I didn't know about that. Thank you. So I may be helping somebody. So if they post a comment asking you to friend them. It's most likely a scam. Otherwise, why wouldn't they be able to friend you? They can't friend you or they probably would. They're testing to see if you think they're real. If you read that and you're like, it was flat. It would be flattering to have somebody real say that to me that, Oh, your smile is, beautiful. You're beautiful. I love your content. I, you, this, that, and the other thing. It would be great to have somebody real say that to me. So oftentimes you might think, oh, this is great. This person's complimenting me. I love it. And you'll simply accept it, but you need to go look at the profile and check it out. And because if you just accept it, oh, okay. She thinks I'm real. You may comment back and say, oh, thank you so much or whatever. And then they'll start a conversation and they'll attempt to build a relationship with you and then eventually get you, oh, I need some money or I need this or I need that or whatever it is. Uh, so to check the check the, the, the photo through 10 I and sometimes it, the photo isn't there. The, a lot of times the photo is not there. I've checked through, through 10 I and Google reverse image, but there's enough other stuff missing out of the profile or enough stuff that makes me suspicious that I'd rather err on the side of caution then get myself set up. And so 10 I, if there are grammatical errors, it's usually done on purpose. I read, I read an article and saw some video about that. They, they do this to see if, oh, okay, if you'll accept a grammatical error, some grammatical errors, you might ex accept anything. You might believe some other things that they're telling you. And if, if you think that this is far-fetched, that people don't fall for this, I'm telling you, go to YouTube and put in romance scammers, or Nigerian romance scammers, uh, those type of things. You'll see a ton of videos come up with men and women who have been bilked out of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, all their life savings, everything. And it's almost like, oh my gosh, this is, you don't, I've heard a couple of them say, I didn't want to believe it wasn't real. I kept hoping it was real. So I just kept sending the money. And it it's sad because you can't get that money back. And then there, this website, this is website, this is a, a Facebook page, Catch the Catfish. This is a good place to go research profiles. And there's some other scammer profile websites out there that you can go and check out and find to see if maybe they're not, uh, they're not, um, they're not real or whatever. So those are some things that you can do to actually find find out for yourself or find out what uh what the situation is so the, this this guy had they they had several photos and this guy's photo has been used so many times that it's it's absolutely crazy i can't imagine and i have a friend who actually this happened to as well so all right back to, back at that so those are just some things that uh, to consider. And, oh my gosh, I just, my whole desire is that, oh my gosh, I have cats everywhere. So here's Meow Mix. And George is over here attempting to talk on the microphone. Here's George. They're both up here. I'm surprised the dog's not here trying to take out one of the cats. So, so George has decided he's going to lay on my desk and Meow, Meow, Meow Mix is sitting in my lap, shedding her white hair all over me. Isn't that wonderful? All right. So the reason I share all of that, I just, I don't like people. The whole thing about, the whole thing about my Think Like a Negotiator content is about helping people to never be taken advantage of again. And this is another way people get taken advantage of. So you, this is part of the verify the facts strategy in the Think Like a Negotiator book. You have to verify the facts. You have to verify the facts and everything because there are people out there looking to take advantage, looking to 
take you down, looking to take from you, from your hard earned things that you get, your hard earned money, your hard earned work. So maybe you are aware of this, but, or, or maybe, maybe you aren't, or maybe you are, if you are, and you know, maybe you should share this with other people because there's somebody out there that's not aware or they wouldn't keep doing this. They're doing this constantly to see who they can get and they will get, and they will find someone. So you can share this video. You can share the, if you're on my Facebook page, you can share that post. I should actually share that probably to my page. And here goes George walking right in front of me. You can't see him. He's like right there. Look at this guy. He's just like, he thinks he owns a place. George, do you mind? I'm trying to do a broadcast here. It would be nice if you would just go find another place to lay down and not in front of my video screen. Thank you very much, George. Appreciate you. All right, move on. Yeah, Meow Mix is still here in the chair. I got cats everywhere and they're hair is going crazy everywhere. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's some great tips that I wanted to share with you today. And uh, of course, fair trade, I'm always uh, really passionate about fair trade. This is fair trade Friday. And usually I always talk about what fair trade is or something to do with fair trade. Um, I just actually purchased some sheets that had fair trade cotton in them. So the, the, the fabric that they use, the cotton that they use are, are certified fair trade. And they sent me a little survey and said, why did you purchase this? And it had a lot of things and it had other, and I said, other, your fair trade, uh, fair trade resource that you use. So I'm working on purchasing a lot more. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth, the cats are taking over. Maybe I should move aside and let let George and Meowmix continue the broadcast, although they would probably sit here and just stare. Maybe they'd meow. I don't know. Do you want to meow, George? What do you have to say? Come here. All right. That's Meowmix meowing. So this is George. Gracie likes to play with George. Gracie is my son's dog. And um, Gracie doesn't seem to understand that George doesn't want to play and Meow Mix certainly doesn't want to play. And oh, great. You may hear uh, Cat and Dog War 3. All right, George. He doesn't want to be on camera today. But man, I think you guys need another bath with some Ferminator because you're shedding a lot. With his tail's right here. Pets, you got to love them. I, I couldn't live without them. Anyway, what was I saying? Fair trade. Okay, so... The sheets, the brand is Bowl and Branch, and I'd heard a lot about them, and I was like, oh, that sounds good, whatever. And then one day I heard in their advertising, we use fair trade cotton, and they explained about their fair trade, uh, their fair trade practices. I'm like, bingo, okay, something new I can purchase and add to my fair trade arsenal of things that I'm purchasing that have fair trade attached to them. Like I've said before, every week I talk about this, uh, you can't necessarily purchase everything fair trade. Yes, Bull and Branch, it's great. I, I'm going to put the sheets on next week because I had just put a new set of sheets on. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait. And they don't even match my bedding, but I just loved them. They, they were like white with blue flowers. And it just, because I love blue, I'm always wearing blue. I'm like, okay, I want some blue sheets. So that's now, that's now a fair trade item that I've added to my arsenal of fair trade. You can't, I mean, like, okay, so I'm using this blue Yeti mic. I'm sure this is not made with fair trade uh, labor. And a, a lot, I haven't researched it, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Like I've said often, you can't purchase everything fair trade, but you can start to make a dent in places like purchasing your chocolate. Great. Gracie's about ready to take down my thing again. You see the the thing right here that the I when I was doing before I did the interview, she knocked this thing down on me like I don't know three times. Well, I'm going to fix it because you know I don't I don't mind. Okay, Gracie, go back, go back, Gracie Marie Fernandez. You need to go back. Okay, so this is Gracie. She's the model of the baskets and beads dog bandanas. There's Gracie, isn't she cute? She's a Malinois shepherd. 
and uh, also known as a maligator. You, you can uh, imagine what maligator means. Yes, we're going to the dog park in an hour when it cools off. Just don't knock this down on me again. Like she really understands that, right? Okay, back to fair trade. Anyway, so like I've, I've said in the past, if you can put, if you're not doing anything fair trade, uh, the thing almost fell on me. Don't go, go, leave it. Oh. So if you can add one, if you're not doing anything fair trade and you can add one fair trade thing, there goes my camera doing that whack thing again. I'm having all kinds of issues today, but the thing is it's live and we're just rolling with it. And, you know, oh, I see Elizabeth put the dog bandanas into the, if you haven't seen those dog bandanas yet, they are so cute. It's in there in the, on the page in the, baskasofbeadskenya.com and if you click you can see dog bandanas but it's really cute okay i'm gonna try to make this fix itself i don't know why this camera keeps doing this i'm fuzzy i don't like it it's weird okay let me and add myself back in did that work no it didn't okay well i'm just going to be fuzzy and maybe the camera will straighten itself out in a little bit let me see if i can it's really annoying to me. No, I don't know what it's doing. I don't have any software to fix that right now. Anyway, so uh, if you can add something fair trade to your arsenal of products that you purchase, whether like, and, and the, the big three, I guess, are chocolate, coffee, and tea, there's other things like sugar and and seafood is even fair trade. There's other things, some of your clothing, like this is obviously fair trade clothing, fair trade jewelry, instead of getting the stuff made in China or wherever where they have forced labor, you can buy something from someone, read your labels and find out where your things are made that you're getting and, and make choices that are going to help somebody in the long run, run in the whole supply chain. That's what fair trade is all about, is actually helping people all the way through the supply chain and know that they're getting paid a fair wage for what they do. So shop fair trade, buy fair. I think the hashtag that the fair trade campaigns is using is buy back fairer, meaning now that we're coming out of COVID focus more on fair trade. And yeah, like I didn't know about, yeah, Colin, I didn't know about fair trade seafood either, but there is forced labor slave labor in the seafood industry. I didn't know about that. So it's, it's, there are things that until you start really looking into it, it's like, oh gosh, where, who, where do my products really come from? So take the opportunity to do a little bit of research, even if it's, if it's just one or two things. One of the best teas that I love is Just Tea and their tea is made in Kenya or they grow, grow in Kenya. Uh, Ken Kenya is the number three exporter of tea behind, I think, India and Sri Lanka, if, if I remember right. So tea is a, a big product for Kenya. Kenya tea is really wonderful. But you can look on the box and see if there's a fair trade uh, certified label on there. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm st not sure what's wrong with my camera. I look fuzzy. I'm sure... I look fuzzy to you. I'm seeing down here in my little screen that it's not fuzzy, but what I'm seeing is fuzzy and I apologize for that. So anyway, all right. So that's about it for today. Again, if you are in the local area tomorrow, I would love to see you. I miss seeing people. I want to hug people. I want to sip a cold drink and sit back in my tent and kick back and catch up. So if you are local to Long Beach, yeah, I know it's fuzzy. I can't figure out why that's doing that. It's something weird with my camera. It's annoying to me, but usually that fixes it, but it has, it's not fixing it for some, some strange reason. I guess the focus is whacked up, whacked. I'm sorry about that, but I can't figure that out. I'm just going to keep going. You can hear me, whatever you can sort of see me. It's all right. Anyway, so if you're local to Long Beach, I'd love to see you tomorrow. I'd love to have you come out and connect with me and just come, I want to hug. 
I want to hug for If you don't want to hug, we can fist bump or whatever. Just come back. Come kick back if you're local to Long Beach. Tomorrow from noon to four at the Parkview Village Shops. Come check out the space at Fair Trade Long Beach. I really uh, did a lot of work on that space. And then join me for Swahili Sunday. I wrote a book. One of my, the first book I wrote was called The Go Pink Rules of Engagement. Five Foundational Principles for Taking Control of the Handlebars of Your Life. I am a motorcycle rider. As a matter of fact, my motor, I'm going to tell that story. My motorcycle has been down for a while because of injuries, and I just paid for the repair today, so I will be getting my bike back on Tuesday. So I'll be hopping on it and taking a spin. I am. I can hardly wait. I love it. My bike's really loud. I'm going to annoy the neighbors in my, co in my condo complex, which will be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll set off some car alarms. Anyway, I wrote a book called The Go Pink Rules of Engagement, Five Foundational Principles for Taking Control of the Handlebars of Your Life. Swahili Sunday for the next few Swahili Sundays and the blog post. I'm going to discuss those rules and, and how you can take control of the handlebars of your life, how you can go from the back seat to the front seat, take control of the handlebars, roll on your throttles to accelerate success. So that'll be the topic for the next, I don't know, four or five Swahili Sundays, maybe somewhere in there, we'll have Layla pop in and give us an update on Kenya. But uh, other than that, that's what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, go pink. Pink stands for power, integrity, negotiation, and knowledge. I'll talk all about that on Sunday. And until then, I hope if I don't see you tomorrow, I hope you have a wonderful uh, weekend. Here's Meow Mix coming to say goodbye again. And until then, I will see you soon. Nakupenda.